watch it. Drink it in. Stupendous. The greatest moment I've seen. This is history being written. Amazing. Welcome back to the footy show where the fetish is real and the footy is soccer tonight. We've got our favorite host with us. Big Underwear, a.k.a. Michael Booty, a.k.a. Mike Daddy. How are you, sir? I'm doing great, man. I'm just trying to fill some drawers over here and pick some balls and play with some feet. You got anything like that over here? Over there? No, I don't. But I can tell you what, we will have some drawers for you to fill very soon. So get that underwear ready. Let's do it. This is your transfer market update brought to you by Total 90. This is 90 seconds with Total 90. First confirmation, we've got to announce Victor Goyakaitis is moving from Coventry over to Sporting for a record fee of 24 million euro. He is a 25-year-old Swedish forward. Very interesting to see Sporting drop that kind of money on a 25-year-old striker from Sweden. We will keep you up to date for Champions League. Booty, what's the next confirmation we got? Next confirmation on the board, Ashley Young to Aston from Aston Villa over to Everton. Two-year deal, or excuse me, no, it was signed two days ago. Signed two days ago. How about you, Hugh? What's the next one? I like this one. Henan, a.k.a. Renan Lodi of Atletico Madrid, our favorite outside Brazilian back, is moving over to Olympic Marseille for a fee of 13 million euro. I love this move. I think he's going to have a fantastic time in France. I think he's also going to have lockdown starting minutes, so good for him on the move. Booty, I'm very excited to talk to you about this one after. What's the latest at Juventus? Oh, boy. We have an entire party over here called Out of the Juve Project. That includes Weston McKinney, Artur, which, by the way, totally thought he was dead. Uh Dennis Zakaria, which who we just came over from last year, as I all recall, um, and also Leo Bonucci, finally out of there to be determined. Artur, we got a couple of clubs looking for at him. Uh, Fiorentina is one of those clubs interested. He's in their list, ladies and gentlemen. Weston McKinney is going to be interesting to see who he goes to. But yeah, a whole lot to talk about later on there. <laughs> Hugh. Next, we've got one of my favorite young strikers out of France, Moussa Diaby of Bayern Leverkusen, right winger. Had a lot of success under Chabi Alonso. Official bid has been sent by Aston Villa for $35 million. It has been rejected. Negotiations are ongoing. Player wants the move. I can see this deal getting across the line. What's, what else is going on in the EPL? Here's a big one. Fred. From Manchester United, we got a couple folks folks looking at him. That's going to be Galatasaray. Some Saudi clubs are looking at him. Fulham also looking at him. Um, he'll be leaving this summer. Speaking of summer, <laughs> Hugh. Well done with that segue. Wow. Jan Sommer of Bayern Munich <laughs> has been on the eyes of Inter. Uh, as well as Anatoly Trubin, Inter will be preparing official bids for both keepers, Jan Sommer and Anatoly Trubin. Anatoly Trubin, for those who don't know, is a goalkeeper out of the Ukrainian league for Shakhtar. Uh, these deals will go through as soon as that Onana deal is accepted by United. As everyone knows, Manchester United are very keen on signing Onana from Inter. What else do we got? That Caicedo from Brighton to Chelsea. Chelsea, once again, pulling some folks in. It's ongoing, the negotiations as we speak, but be interesting to keep an eye on that one. Hugh. Another player. More Saudi, Saudi, Saudi. Frobinho of Liverpool has been rumored to go over to Saudi. Negotiations have only begun with the player. No bid has been sent to Liverpool. What other players at Liverpool are rumored to be going to Saudi, Booty? Well, Klopp has given the green light, my friends, to Jordan Henderson. The old man, the old Liverpool legend. He's going to be leaving Liverpool, going to Saudi. Do we know a team that he's linked with yet, Hugh? The, the Saudi team? 
Yeah. Did we hear anything about that? Uh, nope. I actually, I think I could find out. Let me check that. Let, you know what? Let's do that after. That'd be a good Yeah, just something to look up after. What else you got? Chiro Immobile of Lazio, another player linked to Saudi. We've got a very interesting quote from their coach here. I've not received official bids for Immobile. He's like my son. He's not for sale. Followed up with another quote. But the only way to tempt me for Immobile <laughs> would be for 50 million proposal. And I'd not be sure, not even for that amount. So what you're saying is, is you're open for a sale if the right amount comes through the door. <laughs> Gotta love these Italians, I, man. What's the last piece of news that we've got? I can be bought. Um, man, another another guy that we just see floating there. Lukaku, ladies and gentlemen. Heading from Chelsea back to Inter. $30 million bid. It's ongoing. Um that's apparently what it's supposed to be considered there, but this is still ongoing. It's not what the the amount that Chelsea's looking for here. Uh, so that should be very interesting. See how that one unfolds. Hugh, you got one more for me? Finally, we've got Rasmus Hojland of Atalanta. He has agreed to personal terms with Manchester United. It's never been an, inter- an issue, and he is very keen on the move. However, Atalanta have not had discussions with United yet. PSG have also thrown their hat in the ring. I expect a bidding war between these two clubs. That will do it for our transfer market update. Stick around for our round table talk. Booty, I want to jump right in right up to, to this Juventus. What the hell is going on? Do you have time to try and build the Juventus starting 11? You want to do this? I've done this. Is there 11 left? Is there 11 left? Hey, man, we can find out. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, shoot. Uh, at the way the way things are looking now with Nedved and those guys out, I'm kind of kind of glad to see this a little bit because at this point, if if they wanted to make a move in the transfer market, all eyes are going to be on them, obviously. Okay. So why not build up the funds? There's not going to be any European play this year, earlier this year, excuse me, earlier today. Uh, it was already said that they were going to be accepting – uh, they were going to be dealing with FIFA, basically, and working on a uh, final punishment. They said that they wouldn't participate in European play at all this year if that is going to be the final punishment. So, with that being said, I mean, a lot of uh, you can't really hate on it, you know. A lot of those guys probably want to leave, and also, I mean, if there's a lot of guys, hey, if there's a lot of guys there that they can recoup uh, some funds on and build up funds for the next window, then I'm all for it. But it's looking like a big restart here uh, it, it's just the only weird thing to me is some of these guys they brought in where they guys never wanted to you know never and the angelos wanted to bring is bring in because at this point i thought there were guys that maybe you know allegri wanted to bring in but if that's the case then he's still there and these guys are now out right so like some of these guys they just brought over i mean no nah, mckinney's been there obviously a little while but but Zachariah, they just brought in him two windows ago, if I'm not mistaken. No. And he's already on the way out. So, Benucci needed to go. He's 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 later. See you later. I, we all knew I'm that. I'm glad to see them move on from the Benucci and Chiellini saga. Uh, you know, they it, they really had a great run, but at some point you got to just cut ties and, and move on. So glad to see them do that. I'm glad you brought that up, dude, because that's another one that that was just like they just kept on hanging on to the to the past with those two. Like it, it was they pretty much been done for a few years. Benucci constantly getting beat. I feel like I feel like every time I look up, he's getting beat. And then on the flip side of things, I mean, Chiellini would look like a fucking mummy the last few years, man. Like just and part of it's not his fault. The man's getting fucking old. He's throwing his body around a good bit, but. But yeah, man, uh, very weird scenes over there, but I'm thinking they were kind of heading towards a rebuild anyway without any of that happening. All right, so I've been doing this in the past where I pull up this graphic and we kind of go through position by position. Do you have the time to do this with me right now? Yeah, sure. Okay, so I'm looking over at the last game that Juventus played, all right, and they look to be playing a 3-5-2. All right, so we're just going to assume that they roll with that. 
All right. Yep. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. And it looks like it's a single pivot. So we'll put one here and then two up top. Okay. Just so just for now, we'll just leave it like this just so we can fill positions. Thoughts on Chesney as a starting keeper. Do you think Perrin takes the spot or do you think it's Chesney? Uh, you know, I've always loved me some Chesney. <laughs> um, man, that's it. Like he's just, he's always, to me, he's been the Serie A equivalent of De Gea. He will make you some incredible saves that you never thought he would. Look at the World Cup. He blocked Messi's PK in the World Cup. <laughs> like he, he'll do these things, but then he'll for every like two, three awesome, amazing things he does, he'll do this really one shitty, dumb, boneheaded thing. And unfortunately, that's always the ones I can't get out of my head <laughs> with, with Chesney. So with that being said, I say sell that motherfucker, get some money for him. Somebody's dumb enough to buy him. Uh, I'd, I'd take Perrin. The times I've seen Perrin in, actually, I've actually enjoyed watching him play, man. He's not that bad. And he's a young cat, too. I, I'd, I'd go with Perrin. Okay. So I'm going to keep it like this just because of seniority, but I also think Perrin is the better goalkeeper here. Yeah. I'm looking over at the defending situation. And right now, Banucci out. Sandro out. Danilo out. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be hard to do. I feel like it's going to be hard to build this 11. I'm looking at. If we're talking. Uh, even the guys who are in the rumors, right? I mean. Well, who's in? I mean, do they have center back rumors? Oh, no. I was just saying, like, in general, oh. like, for this whole lineup. Yeah. Because if you think about it, if we pretend these guys who are in the rumors, like Vlahovic, right? Yes. Let's pretend he's not there next year then, right? Mm-hmm. It's uh, it's tough. Um, they were kind of slacking on center backs anyway, and now it's looking really crazy, right? Yeah, I, I, I can't honestly pick, so I'm going to leave those blank. If I had to pick <laughs> right. this, Quadrado is also – I mean, he's usually right here as your right wing back. Right. I don't know where he's – Right. Uh, we do know that Rabio will be there. We do know that Locatelli will be there. So I'm going to put Locatelli right here. Uh, I'm going to put Rabio right here. And then from what I'm looking at is their last game, this guy, Moretti. Can drop him in. Yeah. Um, Bremer. Do you have Bremer? Oh, no. Bremer's in. Bremer's here. That is a great yep. fucking job. I'll put Gatti here. I always forget about uh always forget about Gatti. Um, he's new. He's a young he's a young gunner. Yeah, I, they they were 25. I, I was reading about him like on their site like w- way back, like when they were first looking at him. Um, oh, you know what's going here? Oh, I can't remember. What you got? That's right. That's, That's right. That's 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 one thing I'm uh, I'm I'm very excited about I've seen some way. Um... Okay, so midfield right now, the only position we really don't know for certain because it was occupied by Quadrado is the right wing back position. I'm looking through their De- their squad right now. Booty, do you have any idea what? My only guess would be maybe Danilo over there. Uh, he's also gone. He's also yeah, that's Andre right. Danilo. That's right. You know what might happen? Weya is a right winger for us. And I'm looking uh Kostic. Uh, I saw played on the left wing back. And this was Quadrado. So I would imagine you slide Weya in right here. Because he can play as a right winger. He does for the US. Right. But for Lille, he was a left back. It's very interesting the dynamic that they had him in. So I think your midfield's pretty straight if I'm looking at it. Kostic is a solid player. I really like him. Weya, we know, is just – he's an athlete. He can play this position. Looking up yeah. top, I think it's obvious it's going to be Chiesa. And then I think you're, you guys just bought Milik. 
So I think here, if we're looking at maybe a backup, maybe you have Moise Keen, right? Yeah. Um, it's another another weird one too, man. I'm, you've always just assumed he was going to take that role, and like the opportunities would even be there, but Allegri wouldn't force it. I don't. Know, I can't tell if it's more that he hasn't had a lot of chances, or the chances he's had, he hasn't really taken advantage. I. I feel like the first game he came in for Juve, he scored, and it was a Champions League game. I think it was uh, a knockout round game. Mm. But I've always expected Keane to, you know, like step up and have a bigger role, but right. it's never really happened. Um, we did forget Rugani back here. Ah, oh, good call. That's your boy. Yeah. That's the last one. Yeah. Okay, decent. Yeah. Decent back line. Bremer, for me, is just quality. Just really, he's a, he's a high quality center back. I also love that he's Brazilian, which means he can probably – he's got some ball skills. He's not just a big bruiser. Yep. Uh, so looking at this, this is a decent – I could I could actually see Rovella moving back to where Locatelli is and then allowing Locatelli to be more of a – kind of like a Mazzella. We know that Allegri yeah. loves his Mazzellas. Pogba is still on the squad and was not ruled out officially in that list. Do you think he plays here? And yeah, that'd be so awesome. I just I feel like he I really don't see him staying healthy anymore. I don't see him like I know it's, Juve, to be honest. Yeah. I just I don't I, I think they, they once again did that thing we were just talking about. They bought Paul because they were just, you know, trying to bring up you know, latch on to the past a little bit. Mm-hmm. Those good times. They thought maybe some more were left in him, but I thought so too for a second. But it just seems like he can't stay healthy enough. I think he played a whole 10 minutes the entire year this year. Yeah, he was focused on that World Cup, and it wound up biting him in the butt. Yep, yep. Some other players I'm looking at, we have Cal Jorge. Mm. You remember Cal, the Brazilian? No. No. Uh-uh. How Georgie was bought last summer. He was stolen out of the hands of Milan. Oh, yeah. Never. Haven't seen him. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Another like, – You. I feel like Juve does that a lot too, man. Like they'll buy people like in the past where Allegri, Allegri will bring them in and then he he seems to start latching on and like favoritizing mm-hmm. them. And then you just don't see him. It's weird. Yep. Same with Keane. Like – immediately threw him in there in Champions League, you know, did well. And you're like, okay, cool. Allegri loves this guy. And the next thing you know, you don't see him for like five. It's weird. Allegri just does some weird shit sometimes for me. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. So I I, I feel like I have to keep Vlahovic in this list until he's sold. Yeah. Um, but I have a feeling Juve are going to flip Vlahovic and then use that to build their team. Yeah. But this is a really unfortunate summer being that they missed out on top four and just European play in general because you know they rely on that that money coming in for European play to help build their squad. It's going to be interesting to see how they come back from this. Uh, they And they're losing so many of their leaders and their veterans. It's going to be, it's going to be a rough season. It's going to be like a year zero for Juve here. Yeah, I like that. Year zero. I like that. When Milan was That's true, man. every year, it was like, all right, back to year zero for Milan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Luckily, Rebuild on, City, baby. Luckily, we're on like year two or three now. So at least we're progressing forward <laughs> instead of staying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah right. Yeah. You're on year three, man. Yeah. Fucking right. But anyway, this is great. Do you have any last thoughts you want to throw in here? Oh, man, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing Way. Me too. I really am, man. That's going to be fun. Me too. That's I really hope you market him well. Yeah, I, I, I've liked him. He was, remember when he was at Celtic for a little while? Wow. Do you remember that? Kind of. He was very short. But I'm pretty sure he scored his first, like his very first game with Celtic. I need to look this up, man. Let's see. Was he? Yeah. 
Wow, he scored three goals in 13 games. Dude, I'm telling you, one of those, I'm pretty sure, I'm, I'm damn sure, I'm damn sure, damn it, uh, was like the first game they put him in. So I remember being like, fucking right, man. It was it was honestly like one of the, like it was right when Pulisic started to come up, if, if I'm not mistaken. Mm. So it was like one of the first really big, like, American goals over in Europe, and it kind of got overlooked a little bit. There you go. He made his debut on January 19th in the – why don't you help me out? What is that? What minute is that in right there? Can you see that? Oh, minute 69. Minute 69. And he scored in a 3-0 win. You are correct. It was a – I remember just seeing the highlights, and uh, I was super pumped just because it was Celtic as well. I was like, man, American over Celtic, sweet. Shout out to Cameron Vickers. By the way, he said um, he was in love with the club. Oh, that's cool, man. He won the Scottish Premiership oh, yeah. with Celtic. See, and like for some reason, it all got overlooked, man. Yeah, I think he was like seventeen at the time. Yep, dude. You know what's crazy? All right, let's let's bring this back. Two thousand nineteen. Could he have helped? That 2018 World Cup qualifying team. Oh, man, what a question. Gosh, you know he could have. I mean, shit. Yeah. Yeah. I got to say, yeah. I got to say, yeah. And it, I'm just laughing at how fucking young he would have been. And still, it would have been. It's, Let's do the math. He would have made a bigger impact. Let's do the math. Yep. He was born in 2000. Yep. Did you know? So he would have been 17 or 18. He would have been 18. In 2018. He was fucking at PSG. <laughs> and you're telling me we Whoa. said, nah, 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 nah. We want our MLS players. <laughs> uh, see, I, I didn't see where you were going with that oh, at first, but yep, man. yep, yep. Imagine putting in an 18-year-old at <laughs> PSG sign. Wow. <laughs> Unbelievable. Well. Point of the day goes to Ocho on that one. <laughs> I'll take it. Yeah, that's funny. But man. I did not. I didn't even know that. <laughs> wow. I mean, I'm just noticing, and I'm I'm just going back in time to right? qualifying. You know, he would have been at PSG. So we, I mean, you know that they knew this. You know that they knew Tim Way yep. was at PSG, and they said, "Nope." Man, jo- Jordan Morris, though, dog. Jordan Morris. <laughs> Well, back to your point, I'm really excited to see him here because I think he will be given a much bigger role like we do on the USA squad. We give him a very important role, and I think he will be given that role. Hopefully, Allegri doesn't do his weird bullshit. Hopefully, it's like, you're our dude. You're going to become our next Quadrado because that would be tremendous for the Team USA. He would now have a consistent position with consistent minutes which would translate over to his right wing position for us so i'm here for it i want to quickly get into shout outs and give my shout out to christian pulisic who officially passed his medicals and is officially at practice at ac milan we've been seeing the images all over the internet he and pioli are already on the touchline having conversations i'm curious to see how they communicate i'm wondering if uh, I'm wondering if Pulisic knows Italian. How are they? I don't know how they're communicating, but you know they were they were seen talking to each other, and it, um, just um, head over heels for the LeBron of soccer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he apparently said he uh, he has some Italian roots. Oh, let's look him up. What's your? I just saw that pop up. Um, uh, it just popped on my phone. I don't know what uh, what app it was on, but. But yeah, he was saying uh he was saying he had he had some sort of Italian roots. Dude! Hold on. Pulisic's paternal grandfather, Matej Pulisic, was born in Croatia. Okay. Pulisic added that his paternal grandmother, Johanna Di Stefano, was Sicilian, noting that hey, there you go. my dad, her son, has an Italian flag tattooed on his forearm. Pulisic obtained Croatian citizen, citizenship after moving to Germany in order to avoid applying for a Germany work visa. Wow. 
He's Italian. <laughs> cool. Cool. Good fucking shout out there, man. Thank you for adding that on the end. Point for Hey, Rudy. man, I had to. Yeah, right? You know, had to. Yeah. I, you know, it's funny. I, I I just saw it pop up. I didn't actually read into it, so I'm glad you pulled it up. I, I got distracted. I was like, oh, I got to read that later. Oh. Now we know. Now we know. Christian Pulisic, the, the Sicilian. Dude, by the way, he will never live this down. Do you see this? <laughs> yeah. He has been nicknamed. So I'll read this for people who can't see this. He has also been nicknamed the LeBron James of soccer due to a clip from a television show called Pawn Stars. <laughs> but for those who don't know, to give you context, somebody brought in a signed Chelsea jersey, and the guy at the shop went, "Yeah, he's like the LeBron James of soccer, right?" And the guy was like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, absolutely." <laughs> <laughs> like increase the value of my jersey, please. Uh, was it was it Chumley? No, was it, no this no. one's LeBron James of soccer. <laughs> <laughs> I know about soccer. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like high as fuck all, all the time. All the time. All the time. Oh, man. Did you hear he got, like, busted for meth? Not surprised. Yeah. Probably got shout out to him. Shout out. Didn't know what he was doing. Yeah. <laughs> shout out to Chumley. Yeah. You and your meth you got to call with. Sorry, brother. Yeah. Uh, I got to be more careful. No, uh, real shout out. Uh, I will give one to... Uh... Who should my shout-out be? Uh, my shout-out today is going to go to Christian Pulisic's grandfather for being Sicilian. Or paternal grandmother, excuse me, for being Sicilian, as we just learned. Um, and there you go. That'll do it. Really, actually, and, and I'll tell you what, one more, just really quick. Um, Freddie Adu, because we're about to bid you adieu. <laughs> Dum, 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 dum. No, actually, we don't know what Freddie Adu do anymore. But shout out to Freddie Adu. Shout out to Freddie Adu, the real LeBron James of soccer. <laughs> um, All right, well, everyone, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Peace out, boys. Sponsor by Total Ninety. Bye. Bye. All right, hang tight. <laughs>